So these are not the grade boundaries for the 2022 exams because at the moment they haven't even been written. And the reason for that is that the grade boundaries are only decided once all of the students have sat the exam and all of those exam papers have been marked. And what you can then do is collect all of that data to see how the students are performing for that particular year, for that paper, for that exam board. Now, if we were to maybe look at the marks that the students got, maybe ranging from a low mark to a high mark, and we looked at the number of students getting those, we might see a distribution that might look something a bit like that. Okay, now there's going to be some students who uh, maybe don't prepare that well and get a really low mark. There's going to be a very few students who get almost 100% or even 100% on that exam. But most of you are going to be somewhere in the middle. And the shape of this curve is going to depend on the exam paper that's being sat at that time. Now, it's only when they've got the data that the exam boards can decide what the grade boundaries are to get certain grades. Now, this year, 2022, it's going to be a bit different to normal. I say normal, the last normal year was 2019. And then in 2020 and 2021, there was a bit of grade inflation because we were using teacher assessed and then centre assessed grades. So the total amount of A star grades or the total amount of grade nines is going to be different this year and it's going to be lower than last year but it is going to be higher than 2019 and those normal exam years. The plan is, fingers crossed, there's no more COVID pandemics wiping out your school year. Going into 2023, all of the exams will be back to normal and the grades in 2023 will reflect the grades in 2019. So at the moment, there are no grade boundaries for the exam papers that you're going to be doing and they will only be known about in the summer. Now, how does that affect you? Well, I would say, as my advice as a teacher, is to not worry about the grade boundaries. The best way to get the highest mark in your exams or the highest grade is to just get as many questions right as possible. OK, so don't think about the grade you're going for. Just think about the science or the other subject that you're learning, how you can not only recall some of the key facts, but how you can apply that in maybe a novel, strange exam situation. And then you just want to get as many marks as possible. That's all you need to be concentrating on as a student. Some people uh, might have been doing past papers at home and you can maybe look at previous grade boundaries, but don't forget that's going to be very different to what you might be achieving at home. By the time students sit their real exam, this is going to be the most prepared that they've ever been. There's no distractions. So students tend to do actually often a little bit better in real exams compared to maybe when you're working at home in the evening, you're not sure if you're correct or not. So um, your, the grade boundaries from previous years will give you a guide at the kind of level that you're working at. But really, it's down to you in the real exam just to get as many marks as possible. That's all it is. Now, if you do need, do need any more help this year, um, I know uh, you've probably had a bit of disruption and I know it can be a bit stressful at times. Don't forget, if you want to learn anything for physics in particular, I've got websites for both GCSE and A-level physics. And that means you can access any videos you need whenever you need it, uh, preparing for paper one, paper two, paper three, whatever it might be. So yeah, at the moment, the grade boundaries have not been decided. All you can do as a student is just get as many marks as possible. Thank you.